Patrick from Viberline, and today we're going to talk about three dial indicator concepts. Total indicator reading, or TIR, the validity rule, and true position sensing. I'll zero my dial indicator at 12. And then roll it 180 degrees to 6 o'clock. It reads 30 mils, which represents the total indicator reading, or TIR. Now, as you're probably aware, the actual vertical offset of the shafts is half the TIR, or 15 mils. This is because when using a dial indicator to measure the relative positions of two shafts, the dial reads the misalignment on both sides of the center line so the value comes up as twice the actual offset. The same is true if I zero the dial indicator at 3 o'clock and then roll 180 degrees to 9 o'clock. It reads 20 mils, the TIR, but the actual horizontal offset is half of 20, or 10. Next, to introduce the validity rule, let's set the indicator to zero at 12 o'clock. Now we're going to take readings every 90 degrees for the full 360 degrees. We call this taking sweep indicator readings. So first, let's get a reading at 3 o'clock. There, we have 5 mils. Now another 90 degrees down to 6 o'clock. And that value is 30 mils. Next, we read at 9 o'clock. And that reads 25 mils. And then back to 12 o'clock. And the indicator comes back to zero. The validity rule states that when we rotate the shafts, the value we acquire at the top plus the value at the bottom must equal the sum of the value at 3 o'clock and the value at 9 o'clock. So we had 0 at 12 o'clock and 30 at 6 o'clock. We had 5 at uh, 3 o'clock and 25 at 9 o'clock. So top plus bottom must equal side plus side. The power of the validity rule is that we don't have to rotate a full 360 degrees in order to get accurate alignment information. That can come in very handy if we have obstructions. For example, with a lot of small machines, it's impossible to get a reading at 6 o'clock. We only have to rotate 180 degrees and take just three readings, since if we know three of the values, we can always calculate the fourth value. Whether you're using dial indicators or a laser alignment system, this rule still applies. The validity rule is also the basis of a powerful measurement concept that Viberline has pioneered, which we call true position sensing. I already have the indicators at 12 o'clock that have been zeroed, so I'm going to roll it down to 6 o'clock. And remember, we had 30 mils. I'm going to roll the dial halfway back to 0 or to 15. Now our dial is reading true position. Now if I roll the dial back to 12 o'clock, do you think it will still read 0? Well, let's see. No, it reads 15 mils. Since I half the value, since I set the value to 15 mils at a 6 o'clock position, it also reads the true position at the 12 o'clock position. 15 mils at the bottom, 15 mils at the top. The really cool thing is that regardless of where I have the shafts rotated now, I'm always reading true position. So now if I rotate the dial to 3 o'clock, what do you think the indicator will read? 
Mas assim. Ten mils, which is half of the TIR value that we got from before. Wherever we have the shafts rotated now, we're always reading true position. So what happens if I roll it to nine o'clock? You're right. Since we're reading true position, it still reads 10 mils. So as I've just demonstrated, you can zero the indicators at, at any position, roll it 180 degrees, half the value, and you will then be reading true position. Regardless of the orientation of the indicators, you'll be reading true position in that direction. So can you see how true position sensing can apply to your world? Even if you have an obstruction at six o'clock and you can't obtain a reading down there, you can still start at three or nine and obtain true position values. In our next video, I'll show you how to take advantage of true position sensing. That means less measuring and less loosening and tightening of the bolts. It makes the process much more efficient. I'm Pat Đồng hồ đo hiện tại bây giờ là đang là uh, dương uh, 30 mai. Bây giờ ông này ông sẽ chỉnh lại cái mặt đồng hồ. Chỉ chỉ là chỉnh lại cái mặt đồng hồ thôi. Uh, giảm đi 15 mai. Thì giảm đi 15 mai thì uh, 30 trừ 15 thì nó sẽ còn uh, 15 mai thôi. Đó chỉ là chỉnh lệch soi vị trí không ban đầu. Họ uh, giảm đi 15 mai. To zero or to 15. 30250 The really cool thing is that regardless of where I have the shafts rotated now, I'm always reading true position. So now if I rotate the dial to 3 o'clock, what do you think the indicator will read? Ở khi họ xoay đến vị trí 3 giờ này thì sao? Thì cái này cũng biết bị giảm đi 15 mai thì còn 5 trừ 15 còn 10 mai. Half of the TIR value that we got from before. Wherever we have the shafts rotated now, we're always reading true position. So what happens if I roll it to nine o'clock? Nó vẫn luôn hiển thị đúng đó chị. Thực. Và bên này mười năm trừ hai năm trừ mười năm còn mười mai đúng không ạ? Đấy họ chỉ xỉn xoay xoay cái mặt đồng hồ thôi. Lệch thì đã chị thay đổi cái gốc đã chị đo thôi chứ không 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 động gì đến cái phần cố định gắn trên cái sót này cái trục này. Đấy cũng mười mai hai năm trừ mười còn ở trừ mười năm còn mười mai và cộng bên trái bên phải lại theo công thức mà ông ấy nói là mười cộng âm mười là bằng không mười năm cộng âm mười năm bậc thấp bằng không thì có nghĩa là sự kết nối giữa bơm và cái motor này ở đồng trục và lai mình Jacking bolts are bolts used to move machinery during the alignment process. They can be used vertically, horizontally, or axially. However, in most cases, shims are used to reposition machines vertically, while jacking bolts should be used to move machines horizontally. We say should be because many mechanics still use hammers, pry bars, brass bars, or whatever is available to move the machines. However, these methods often are not effective because you need the same degree of precision moving the machine horizontally as you do vertically with shims. Let us give you a brief demonstration on the necessity for jacking bolts in the precision shaft alignment process. With two dial indicators set to our horizontal corrections required at the feet, we'll use a dead blow hammer to move the motor. As you can see, It is much harder to control precise movement using a hammer. Even if it is possible to control the movement, striking a machine with a hammer is never good practice 
because it can damage machine components. Now, we will set the dial indicators in the same position at the feet, but this time, we will move the motor using jacking bolts. As you can see, the movements are easier, more accurate, and much smoother, all accomplished without striking the motor. Jacking bolts can be purchased already installed on the machine, or they can be added on as part of the installation. There are also other devices available to perform this process, such as this side align kit. Using jacking bolts will increase your machine's accuracy, speed up your alignment, and minimize the risk of damaging the machine with a hammer. They are small tools, but they make a huge difference in precision shaft alignment. Hi, I'm Patrick Lawrence from Viberline, and today we're going to talk about four pre-alignment steps that will make our shaft alignment... A shim is a piece of metal or other material used to fill in space between parts, which makes them an integral part of the alignment process. Shims have three main functions as it relates to shaft alignment. One, raise or lower machines for the purpose of precision alignment. Two, give a smooth surface for the machine's feet to contact. And three, compensate for soft foot. Let's look at these three functions in more detail. First, shims help to raise or lower machines. Shims are used to raise the movable machine so that its elevation or height at the shaft center line is equal to the shaft center line of the stationary machine. There may be different amounts or thicknesses of shims between the drive end and non-drive end. This is done to correct any angularity that might be present. Second, shims are used to achieve a smooth surface. In many cases, the base plate or frame may not be completely smooth. Shims can compensate for this. Since most pre-cut shims have a smooth surface, this minimizes the chance for dirt and other debris to get between the shim and the machine feet. Third, shims can compensate for soft foot, which is a common problem when performing a shaft alignment. If one foot is higher or lower than its adjacent foot, a shim can compensate for this irregularity. In some instances, a shim may be cut or stepped to compensate for an angled soft foot. It is also important to note that proper care and handling of shims is key when it comes to shaft alignment. Shims should always be clean, flat, and straight. Bent, dirty, or painted shims will cause irregularities in your measurements. Additionally, shims should be big enough to cover at least 50 to 75% of the foot. When shims are installed, they should be slid in until they contact the hold down bolt, then pulled back about a quarter inch or so. This prevents the threads of the bolts from bending the shim as the bolt is tightened. Remember to minimize the number of shims you use. It's always better to consolidate with thicker, fewer shims. Lastly, measure the thickness of shims with a micrometer or caliper. Even small amounts of error on shim thickness can be compounded, causing errors. Measure to be sure that the labeling on a shim can be trusted. We'll end with an important takeaway about your shim kit. Please keep your shims clean and organized. It may seem like busy work now, but if you need to complete an alignment quickly, maybe because production is down, you'll be glad your shims are organized by thickness and easily accessible. For more information on shims,